We've been talking about this Penn State child sex abuse scandal. Department of Education is now investigating these allegations. And, of course, a lot of these stories make a lot of parents wonder, how do you protect your children from predators like this? Joining us now to talk about this is Dr. Peter Stavanoa. He is the manager of psychological services at Children's Medical Center of Dallas. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. The one thing about this, it just kind of points out is you never know where something like this could come from. That's absolutely right, and I think that that's why the emphasis for parents really needs to be on preparing their children. You know, certainly we always need to be vigilant for new situations and new people that our our kids are going to be interacting with, but also at the same time to always make sure that our kids are prepared, that they understand the boundaries that they have, that, you know, nobody can touch them inappropriately, um, that they have permission to say no to adults, uh, and, and so that to make sure that our kids know as they go into any new situation that they've got that knowledge and and have that permission to come to somebody. Doctor, talking about something like this has got to be one of the hardest things that a parent has to do has to do in because no one wants to think this is a, that this would happen to our kids. How do you balance that? That that's the word and the perfect word is, is to use is balance because we don't want to make our kids fearful or paranoid of going into new situations and and we don't want to make them untrustful of every new adult that they encounter. And so really I think that that parents need to be pretty matter of fact about this. They need to keep, you know, sort of a, a reality check that it is an unusual and a very rare situation. But at the same time, we want to acknowledge that, you know, bad things can happen. Even though most people are good people, there are a few out there that aren't. And so that's why we really emphasize preparing the child to be vigilant, to be ready to say no, um, and to, to feel as though they've got that power to do so. At what age should you be talking to your children about this? You know, really, you should be starting with toddlers, and, and you want to be talking about just limiting, you know, where people can touch you, um, being very simple, obviously, in, at that age, but then it's not a one-time conversation with, that you have with your kids. This is something that you revisit periodically with them to make sure that it's in their conscious mind so that they're considering it as they come into new situations as they get older. Using news stories like this is really a great segue into that because it is kind of a sensitive, delicate, sort of uncomfortable things for parents to just bring up. What's going on at Penn State has really put a focus, a laser focus on child sex predators. Do you find the numbers of cases of this are growing or is it just, again, just a spotlight being shown on it? You know, the, I think the statistics would suggest it's really a spotlight that's being shown on it. I think that the number of cases has actually decreased according to what I've seen over the last 15, 20 years. But when you have this kind of media attention and these kinds of, you know, celebrities involved in it, uh, I think it really just shows a spotlight. And so, again, it's important for parents to help kids interpret this as just that. It really is just kind of a media spotlight. It's not something that suggests that kids should be overly paranoid or overly concerned or fearful, but they do need to remain vigilant. I think it's a really good reminder of that. The other aspect of something like this, there are predators online, so areas like Facebook and Twitter just kind of point out that parents have to be in the same room with their kids when they are um, on social media sites. Absolutely, and I think that's one of the harder things because I think a lot of times parents sort of forget about that. They think their kids are safe because they're by themselves, but keeping a monitor on that, um, particularly for kids who where they really emphasize that as their social network. Maybe these are kids that you know more on the fringe socially at school or with a peer group, and so if their primary emphasis is online activity, parents need to be especially watchful. Thank you so much for your time. Dr. Peter Stavano is the manager of psychological services at Children's Medical Center of Dallas. Cowboys, Bills, Bills.